from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Morialli and Hitch. All right, welcome everybody to the Morialli and Hitch podcast episode. That I can't remember. It's uh, awesome to be here. It is what day is it today? March twenty first, twentieth, twenty first, two thousand twenty twenty two. I'm Mike Morielli. This is Rob Hitchcock. Rob, I have prepared zero for this podcast today, which yeah. is <laughs> which is even less than usual. <laughs> it's par for the course. It's okay. <laughs> I was thinking about it last night, buddy. We haven't done this for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, maybe. And uh, I thought maybe I should just text them and figure out. <laughs> like, what are we going to talk about? And I'm like, no, that would just ruin the whole show because it would ruin everything. It would ruin everything. So we just do what and we do be best. Staged. Just, just talk. That's it. Let's just talk. Hey, listen, I, I just got back. I've been on a, oh, yesterday I was exhausted, but that's a whole other side story. For the last 17 days, I've been away 14 days. It was in Nicaragua. We just got for some basketball, just got back to Calgary for some basketball. And guess the donkeys that I ran into in Calgary. Some of our very good friends. Scott Coe? I'll do it. Scott Coe is one of them. <laughs> okay. Scott Coe is one of them. Uh, uh, the other one is is our, is our friend Lummer. Oh, of Ran course. into Lummer too. But the biggest, the biggest character, I haven't seen him, and you probably haven't seen him in a decade. Uh, think about your position in Calgary. Good dude. He hasn't changed a lick. Hmm. Think about it. Yeah, a lot of head injuries. Wes Lysak. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. oh, He's dude. a beauty. <laughs> Tell me he hasn't changed. Not one bit. Not a bit. Not one bit. <laughs> I sat, so I, I have this thing, I, I going back and forth, Co and Lummer, and, and both Co and Lummer came by one of the practices, but uh, uh, Scott wanted me for, for beer at the keg because we're staying at the West, and it's right there. So I go down there, and all of a sudden, Wes is there. So unbeknownst to us, Wes was there already. I think he lives there during yeah. the day. Yeah. And then Code jumped in and I went in. He was telling us stories and they were awesome. It, it, it felt like I was back 10, 15 years ago, yeah. but he was telling stories. I was like, when did this happen? He's like, oh, like on Friday. I'm like, what? <laughs> my mind is blown. I, my mind was blown. I couldn't even handle it. He had, it was giving me anxiety. I'm like, oh this God. guy is something else. Yeah, he always was and always will be. Yeah. Love him. <laughs> he was Hell of a player. Love, love to hit. Love to hit. Good good oh, guys. Yeah. And Scotty Cole and Lummer. Like those are just those are just two legends as well. My God. Well, there's some X Tie Cats, right? We got yeah. Cole. I, now I never played with Cole because when I when he came, I think it was probably oh two oh three, yeah. I was in Toronto. Yeah. And then but we always I mean we all hung around, we were all close and, and all that stuff. But uh yeah, we took it was great under, to see those guys. we took him under our wing, was a rookie. Yeah, yeah. He, uh we got him to do the buffalo, we got him to drink, we got him to do a lot of stuff, and he fit he fit right in. He was oh, good. He fit right in. He yeah. fit right in. Love so him. he's grown up nicely. Lumber's grown up very nicely. Wes is out of his mind. Yeah. He's out of his mind. I love everybody. Love and he's what, oh. 47, 46? He's I would younger say now. He's got to be mid 40s. He's not, yeah. he's not, well. uh, he's, you know, I guess, hey, good for him. <laughs> yeah, good for him. It's nice, How hearing, about you, this, buddy? nice hearing, nice hearing the stories, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just had, had a blast and we were we just talking about old times and the good stories and uh, going to Vegas for, uh, players association stuff going to barbados for players association stuff and all the good times we had so it was, it was nice to see him yeah um good. we had a good uh turnout we we played two games in calgary we beat both uh nicaragua and puerto rico we tied for first in our group and we lost out on bloody points so yeah. we're not going to the final it's so terrible so we all went three and three yeah we actually beat the um nicaraguan team twice two and one but based on points, they went ahead of us. But anyways, my, my Maybe, point of this is we went to Calgary to try something, to try out that market. It was awesome. I hope we can put a team there in the somewhat not too distant future. So for the listeners that maybe don't know what just went on there for the last. So you oh, yeah, maybe I should tell them. Maybe just explain a little <laughs> bit about. So these teams came from afar. That's why you travel to bring them here to have this. Maybe you can explain yes. it a little bit for them. Just yes, so. I will do that. So. Uh, we are playing what's called the Basketball Champions League of Americas under FIBA. 
So it's no different than the Champions League and soccer, et cetera. We played against 11 other uh, teams that won their respective divisions in North, Central, and South America. Uh, we were lumped in with Puerto Rico and Nicaragua. Uh, all three of our groups, went. we had three group stages, twice in Nicaragua, once in Calgary, and we went three and three overall. Uh, the top two in each division advances to um, the final eight, which is taking place next week. It happens to be taking place in Rio de Janeiro. So I was a little upset that uh, we lost out on points. I think that would have been a nice bucket list thing, but <laughs> learned a lot. And, of course, we don't have a team in Calgary, but our Edmonton team who represented us uh, is just down the road. And believe me, it's kind of weird having an Edmonton team in Calgary because it's yeah. like having a Toronto team in Hamilton. Yeah. But uh, but we had a lot of fun. We won both our games. Crowds came out. It was a great time. And uh, we learned a lot. So that's kind of where we're at. Here's a question. Now, is this just the Edmonton team, from my knowledge, or is this like an all-star team from all your teams put together? Yeah, it's, it's mostly an all-star team. We had, you know, a lot of our guys, when we finish in mid-August, our guys go all over the world. Yeah. So they're in Europe and Asia and Australia and what have you. Some of our guys stay home. Um, you know, we kept a few guys home because we had this opportunity. Uh, we didn't get some of our best players until the third window, which is the window we just had, including our uh, Jordan Baker, who's a Edmonton stinger himself and the top Canadian. He was awesome. Yeah. So. Long story short, it's a, a bit of a mix. It was coached by the um, head coach of Edmonton, and we had about four or five players over the duration, but it is a bit of a mix. But the good thing is, we, we you know, the guys we're playing against are all national team members. Like, they play they play together for a decade. So all the Puerto Ricans are, are literally U.S.-born players, yeah. right? Yeah. They carry a passport, so they play in Puerto Rico. They get paid a lot, but they've been playing together for decades. Our guys were just young and hungry. We finally put a really good team on the court in the second. Not that we didn't before, but we finally had all our pieces come together. And, you know, I, I realized quite quickly, man, if we can do this right moving forward, yeah. not only are we going to get over a group, we can win this darn thing. So oh, it was an awesome experience. Oh, good for you, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Too bad you're not me. going to Rio. To? <sighs> the beach in Rio, I hear, is oh, bad. <laughs> I was going to wear my thong, the one I got. Yeah, the tiger print one. <laughs> the tiger thong. <laughs> I've been uh, I've been good today. I started fresh. I got up at six fifteen, and uh, my buddy Scotty Demont, who plays, uh, we call him the Plug. He's uh, <laughs> he's a beauty. Is he can watch a movie on his back? Like he's just he's thick and so big fire hydrant. Fire hydrant, yeah. So, anyways, he's got a hip problem, and he's fifty three. And we he said to me the other day, we should go to the gym at the golf club. I said. Let's go. So we started today. I met him at six thirty today. Yeah, today we did it. And because uh, I, I don't know. If, I guess we haven't really told you because we haven't had this for a couple of weeks. But you know, I had reconstructive surgery on my shoulder like two years ago. Um, three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, I'm playing hockey on my Thursday night league, and there's a guy I'm playing against. Uh, his name's Shitty. He's about two. He's a really good hockey player. His name's his name, what? Shitty. They call him Shitty. <laughs> but he's a really good hockey player. He's about two seventy. So. Oh, puck boy, comes off, pucks comes from my end. I, I, I kind of turn and he's like right there along the board. So I chip it off the boards really quick. And I try to, to, to get away from him, but he ends up turning kind of left into me. And I was already in the air and I caught him. I should have just in hindsight, should have fucking ran right through him because yeah. that's what I, it would have been a, a lot easier collision, but a nice guy tried to get around him. And anyways, I, I catch him and he falls on me and I hit the ice with no shoulder pads, so head and sh right shoulder hit the oh. ice. I've got a torn rotator in my right side now. No, you don't. Yeah, buddy, it's no, not even. Don't. It's not even funny. It's I can do I can do stuff here. I just can't I can't turn anything over my head. So, so I'm. Well, when did you have me. the surgery? On which one? Before? Left. Oh Left. my God! Now you have the right. Torn. Now my right one's done. So Michelle's like, maybe it's time to hang the skates up, and just. <laughs> you know, concentrate on doing some light workouts and keeping your heart going. I said, yeah, good idea. Anyway, so long story short, went this morning with Dumo and did a good workout. He probably can't walk right now and he's at work, can't walk, which is great. But uh, other than that, you know, been keeping busy. My daughter Ava got into uh, a concurrent teaching six-year program at Brock. No way. Yeah, she, nice. I told her she needs to go to like Western or Queens or somewhere and get out of the house because I don't want her here for six more years. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a really tough program to get into. So she got into that and she's looking forward to it. I think she's going to try for um, to play soccer there as well. 
Is she going to stay at home or live in the dorms? uh, Here first, I think. Yeah, I think here first and then maybe get her to my mom's over at Ridley, over by Ridley, (laughs) get her in the basement there. Um, How about the, uh, well, we got to talk about a couple things. March Madness first, but let's talk about the cats for a second. Like, so Banks gone. Gone. We we haven't talked about that because that just happened a couple weeks ago. So he's in Toronto, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Toronto. Um, look, I was looking at the roster this morning just to see. There's a lot of guys on there. I don't want no idea. I know. I, they brought a lot of guys in. I, I Like, I know the names of some of these guys, but I don't know. It's going to be weird looking at them again, you know, looking at these guys. There's a bunch of veteran guys, of course, that are core guys that are back, but it's tough. It's going to be tough. Uh, you know, it's just seeing the the major guys, you know, like Mazzoli and Banks and those guys gone to other teams. I thought we didn't really, we don't, I don't think as players, we paid attention to that too much. eh? Like we had a couple you good guys what? there. I don't yeah. know. You know what the big thing I remember was when Steiny left over yeah. several thousand dollars and Gerald Vaughn left over several thousand dollars because we were too cheap. No, this is before yeah. the Bob Young era. We were too cheap to give these guys an extra five or 10 grand. Mm-hmm. We could have had, you know, we went 98, 99. We should have went 2000, 2001, yeah. 2000. Like, we should have done that. Yeah. We could have had our own little, there's no doubt in my mind. No well, doubt in my mind. I think we we knew the the writing was on the wall when they asked us to pay for our, the taxes on our great cup rings in 99. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, I thought you know, they're not going to pay guys to hang around here. And free agency is not what it is today. Guys oh, are no, leaving no. for 100 grand more, yeah. 80 grand more. We were le- These guys were leaving for three thousand dollars more eight thousand dollars more it's true yeah and they wouldn't pay it guys wouldn't pay it no no ten thousand too much yeah. like our highest paid player would have been danny yeah right and it would he would have got paid less than what these quarterbacks are getting paid in signing bonuses now yeah. their I, signing bonuses are like 150 200 yeah. 170 190 i was looking at something the other day that uh, justin dunk put out on three down nation i was like what like yeah. guaranteed con like essentially guaranteed contracts. Yeah. It was uh times have changed, man. And and now we got all this talk about the potential of four downs. And you yeah. know, oh my god, this is like but it's, it's not funny gonna be good. not gonna be good. Well, Randy hasn't really said no, right? So when he gets que- asked, and I guess he's doing his tour around the, the country, he hasn't really said no, he hasn't really said yes. He's kind of leaving it vague, and I obviously understand that part um, until they know for sure. But uh, Richie Hall had a thing the other day too, and maybe you, you you're a good one to talk about this. You know, if the CFL ever were to go to four downs again, hypothetically, how hard would that be on the defense? Like, Crazy. how do you stop a team it's, with our field dimensions? It's c- c- yeah. impossible. You couldn't. You wouldn't stop them. That's what they want. They want more points, probably more excitement. Yeah. I understand, but yeah, God, I mean, you got to be like, think about the uh, the ability for the teams now to convert on second down. Now they don't even have to convert on second down. They just got to go three yards, three yards, three yards. That's it. Or whatever. You're, you're yeah. whatever, you know? Defense would be out there 100 plays a game. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Just get torched. That That's a lot. Well, if they're going to do that, they better add 15 guys to the roster because you're going to need guys subbing in. Oh, they're going to be tired. <laughs> you're going to be tired. That field? Oh, forget it. For you, you could forget no way. It. I would quit. I, listen, I, I think uh, training camp starts in a couple of months. Yeah, like May. Yeah, May some because their first game yeah. is June 1st or something like that. So It must start mid-May or something, um, yeah. which is right around the corner. And like you said, you know, there's been some major – um, guys going elsewhere. Obviously, Mazzoli, we felt that that one was coming. I don't think yeah. anybody knew it would be Evans or Mazzoli. And, and uh, the East is becoming really tough. Um, Toronto. Toronto's looking Toronto, good. Toronto, they're yeah. spending money. If they yeah. if they get some of these guys, you know, like the Andrew Harris's of the world, if this guy still has something left in the tank, which I assume he does, yeah. you know, that the East has become, man, a lot more challenging, which it should be. I got to be honest. It should be. Still going to be fun going down to Toronto and seeing the 4,400 people in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> That's pathetic. We've talked about this a oh, hundred times. What a stupid market. Toronto, wake up. I know there's a, we don't have a lot of listeners, but bloody hell, wake <laughs> up. That's a good product. Yes, you're not getting an NFL team right now, but 
just go watch it. It's a fun, it's fun for families. It's, it's, it's a good time, but I love going there because you get a seat anywhere you want. Just move. Oh, God, yeah. There's more Hamilton fans there when we play uh, the Argos than there are uh, Argo fans. Actually, I wouldn't pay. Which, I would never pay for a ticket. Pay, never. Pay. It's <laughs> like waiting to line at the bar. I can't wait to line at a bar. Come on. Never. Hey, or, you've been you watching. Even have to pay for golf. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Are you watching uh, any of the Madness? Any March Madness? I have been watching. I have been. March Madness, even before I got more involved in the basketball, was, is always my favorite uh, yeah. college stuff, uh, college uh, sports. It just, there's something about it. There's always um, tight games. There's always upsets. Uh, it, it's fantastic. I love it. I've been I've been 20 years, honestly, probably more of a Thursday, Friday. It's just on in my house all day. Game after game after game. It's awesome. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like from noon till midnight, Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday. Yesterday, Arizona was on. I couldn't keep my eyes open, but Arizona was on at 9.50 they started. I just couldn't. Yeah. I watched a bit, and that was it, but... You know I'm a Duke Blue Devil fan, right? I've loved I've loved Duke for a lot of years, and you like Chris? You probably like Christian Leitner. Ah, yeah, he's a good guy. Shashevsky, <laughs> <laughs> though, Coach K's done this year, and um, I, know. I don't know. I just I've just something about Duke. Uh, never never a band bandwagon jumper, but I just I've always liked Duke, and you know they uh, they won the first one a little bit and yesterday Michigan State was was they're up I think Michigan State was up by 5 with 4 minutes ago and then Duke came back and won by 9 but I don't know if you do, do you do brackets I I, I don't do bra- the brackets have been going around the office I honestly god I just haven't had a chance I did hear of this new bracket once or the new bracket maybe I, people have done it for years where you know the 64 names of 64 teams go into the hat you pull out one team that's your team for the tournament Oh. And it's just kind of a random draw in a way you go. It takes There's no skill in that, right, whatsoever. It's basically luck of the draw. So if you get Duke Cal, or Kansas Cal, or – Cal State, Cal State Fullerton, uh, 16, you're done. <laughs> then see you later. Yeah. See you. But, you know, Kentucky's out. There's lots of, there's lots of Baylor. upsets, right? You think, I know, that was a good game. When yeah. they came back to tie it, um, I was like, oh, they, they got the momentum going into overtime. But uh, – no, that changed in a hurry. That was that was good. Again, that level of basketball where you know that these guys are trying every single play. You're not waiting for the last two minutes. It's up and down the court. The athleticism on these kids and the money they generate. Oh. The money. And I know they got all these nil things now, name, image, and likeness. And some of these, these players get paid. You know, let's face it. With the amount of hundreds of millions of dollars they generate for the NCAA, you know, I pay to get damn kids. I mean, yep. Yep. it's crazy. The, I, don't know, I don't know if you've seen that kid for uh, from Purdue, six foot or seven foot four. He's Canadian, Zach Eddy. Is Eddie? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like not not the most <laughs> doesn't move around very well, but oh my god! Like I was watching him yesterday, then had a couple just grabbing the basket. He touches the backboard. Oh just yeah, standing there just touching it. Like it's he, fun seeing Canadian some big dudes. Kid. He was on the the. Uh, the junior national team he'll yeah. probably be i don't know if he'll go back but from you know the people that i talk to he'll probably be a second round draft pick and we'll probably have three or four first round nba draft picks uh this year oh yeah guy like ben matherin uh shade and sharp and some other guys like there's some yeah. there's some dudes that are playing i think there's 30 canadians or so playing in the tournament uh 30 something canadians playing in the tournament this year so yeah, they highlighted yeah, they highlighted like six of them before the on the Thursday they highlighted six Canadians like and they're all top guys. Like, oh yeah, like top, which is really nice to see. I love to love to see that. But this guy, yeah, he's. I guess they were saying yesterday that in grade seven he was six foot six, grade eight he was six ten, and then grade ten he was seven foot, and he started playing God. basketball at fifteen years old. He was seven foot. He started playing basketball. <laughs> That's crazy. There's a kid, it's crazy. There's a kid. Yeah, I think he's 16 years old. He's French. He's from Quebec. He's still uh, he's 15 or 16. He's seven foot five, Canadian kid. Andre like, the how, Giant. How did people grow this big? Uh, I don't know. No, it's big. What would you, you do if that guy seven foot four came over the middle? What would you do to that guy? Had him right in the waist. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, he wouldn't be able to get upfield. He'd be tackled no. by the by the linebackers. Imagine oh, that playing, bad. dress that guy up uh, for like play tight end and just let him run a five yard hook and throw the ball at eight feet. No one's going to touch it. <laughs> Who's going to touch him? 
Everybody, <laughs> those knees would be toast away eh? instantly. Oh, done. Yeah. Hey, you know what I just noticed? I don't know why, but I just noticed this. I don't think we've ever talked about this. You and I were both drafted in the second round 17th pick. I know. I didn't we both, know that. We both retired, forced retirement on the same day. We came in together. We well, you, you were drafted. Open. You were drafted earlier. The year, year earlier, but yeah. still, round two and a seventeenth pick. Those those guys in front of us. What a, those coaches? They're stupid. They should have seventeen picks. They who, who are the guys in front of you? I think we mentioned this one show. I, I said that Hamilton picked some guy, Breckenridge or Breckenback yeah, yeah. or whatever. Jeremy Brayton back. I think that's the guy's name. No yeah. idea. I don't think he ever played. But who are some of the guys that went before you? Anybody that the old lineman uh, from oh my god, how come I forget his name? Big white, big white uh, offensive lineman from like he went to Western. I think uh, he was drafted. I think right before me or right after me. Um, played about eight nine years for us. Oh my god, what's his name? Jude St. John. Yeah. Jude, no, nah, yeah, a good Jude St. John, yeah, yeah, good, great, Jude's guy. A great guy. I think it was Jude, yeah. but anyways, yeah, he was, he was. I, I think when I was in Saskatchewan, um, or sorry, we went to Winnipeg for the combine. Saskatchewan came up, and I think they told me that now yeah, you're going to be picked number one, and da da da. I said, oh, it's great, Saskatchewan. I just wanted to be picked, and I told, yeah, we had this conversation because my dad said, my dad's the one that oh, called yeah. me and said, yeah, you're drafted to Hamilton. I said, how do you know? Because <laughs> I already got the call. I said, oh fuck. How does that happen, though, man? Like. Uh, who went first that year, I wonder? We'd have to do a Google search. But go, just uh, do a Google search, would you? While you're in the background there. 1995. Murphy. Who? Murphy. Yo Murphy. Yo Murphy, I think, was my year in How about 94. 95? Look at 95. I bet you look at look the at, first uh, seven players. This is and... 95. Oh, really? I thought Yo was at 94. I tell you what, why don't you do do our listeners a favor? Why don't you give the top picks of the 1994 draft? See if you can Google it. Is that? And then we'll also look at the top picks in the 95 draft, which was Rob's draft. Let's figure out what happened. Oh, you know who went ahead of me in 94? We all went to the same team. Trevor Shaw and Steph Potassi. I think yeah. both Steph and Trevor might have been first round draft picks. And we yeah. all went to BC together. Yeah, and then I got the heave ho, and the rest is history. Yeah, Trev stayed there a year, and then yeah, Trev and Steph. No, a couple years, I think. Yeah, I think they're a couple years, and then Hamilton. Val St. Germain. Val. Oh, Val Stingerman. What pick was he? He was number one in '94. '94. Supplemental. That's right. Val. (laughs) That's right. Val's a beauty. Yeah, I know you, there are too many. We've talked about Val yeah, before. Yeah, Val's, yeah. Val's a good dude. Who else is there? Uh, you stopping at one or what are you doing? Chris Burns. Burnsy. Burnsy. <laughs> was he number two? Right here? Number two? Right. Chris Burns. He was, was number, number two. two. Oh my god. The Badger. Remember the Badger? We'd have the uh the give us the give us the first round. Song. Give us the first yeah. round, Buckle. The uh, top Vince, the top. Vince Danielson. Okay. Yeah, I know Ryan, that. He was Ryan, my roommate. Ryan Carey. No, right. He doesn't have a no Wikipedia idea. page, so never played. <laughs> Tony Bailey, Trevor Shaw, Rod Murphy, John Callen, Kalen. Really? John Kalen. So Tony, Tony Bailey. Patasic. Oh, Tony Bailey was the big yeah, remember black the big guy. guy from out east. No, Tony Bailey was his mom was a, an Olympic sprinter. Yes, but he I think was, he went to like St. Mary's or something. Yeah, like he was I think beast. he was like two sixty and look, I think he had five percent body fat on him. That was, oh, a, that that was a beast. Ed Philly, Ed Philly on. Ed, yeah. Ed was a tough dude. Ed was a tough. Well, dude. That's, that's ninety four. That's yeah, good. This is, but how about ninety five? Okay, let's do it, Buckle. This is good. It's interactive. It is. So number People one listening in their car right now. Number, number one, one is Newton. Newton, oh, Tom, Tom Newton. Newton. Tom Remember Newton. Tommy Newton? He played for us. Big yeah. offensive lineman. Yeah, then he yeah. went to the NFL. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. He went Actually, Newton. I think he went to the NFL first, first and then, then came, came back, back to play with us after. That's right. Yeah, he was a good guy. All right, rattle him off. Stephen Reed. Yeah. Mark, uh, yeah, he played in Montreal. Mark Montreal. Montreal. Mark, he, he looks like Montreal. Mont, Mont, yeah. Mont, yeah, I know what you mean. I think Montreal. he was a receiver. Yeah. He went to Concordia Troy or Alexander. Like that. Yeah. No idea. Did John Mel Nash do? Troy Alexander was a, a receiver, wasn't he? Is the wide out? Does it say wide receiver? Uh, or DB? <laughs> One of the two. 
DB. I don't remember. DB, Troy. DB, yeah, really, yeah. Eh? Okay. Who was the other guy next? Uh, Hisham El Mashtub. Yeah. No, no Wikipedia page. Me. Lebanese <laughs> born. And, uh, s- s- these people don't have Wikipedia articles, but C. Ab Graham, Kevin Reed, Mark Hatfield, John no, Murphy. No. Young. No Hatfield. These guys never played. Dwayne Provo. Yeah, Provo's good. Pro, he's ahead he's of so too. Oh boy. They'll see see what the waste those those whoever was scouting back then had no idea what they were doing and they didn't pick us. That just goes to show you. Yeah. Right? That's you right. never know. Draft well, picks are uh, as a matter of fact, the the CFL draft should be coming up relatively soon. Yeah. Uh having said that, they're doing their combines now. When we went, we, I think we've had this discussion. Our combine was on the indoor outdoor turf at the at the the golf bubble in Winnipeg. It was awful. Oh, yeah. it was sub, awful. Sub sandwiches and yeah, right. the draft. The, the draft Jeez means works. nothing. The draft means nothing. Tom Bale and Tom Brady is sixth pick, sixth sixth round. So whatever. Oh, He's, buddy, I don't know if you read. You know, we have, we don't have too many fans, but there was one fan that got really mad because we were talking about Tom Brady on our last show. Oh, really? Yeah, he chewed us out on the well, whatever. He tweeted about it. I didn't He's tired it. of hearing about Tom Brady. He wants us to talk about the tie cats. But the thing yeah. is, we don't have we just talk about whatever. Yeah. Well, ask this gentleman to or lady to send something in and some give us some um, give us some support. They can help us out. <laughs> <laughs> but go, what's been going on with you, fella? You're on mute. You know, it's you know, it's dire straits when you come to me. Dire Straits well, is, is a good, yeah, that's are, a good band. Dire Straits is a good band. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Money but for nothing. I know, and you guys, for free. I know you guys are, you guys have just so much content this week, but you're just going to maybe save it for yeah. next time. Cause you want to hear what this I want to This is petering say. off. This I want to is... take your, your um, guitar in the back and smash it. That's what I want to do. Take the guitar off the wall, like, uh, and just smash it on your keyboard. Yeah, any, any, can you play anything there? What's going on? What's going on the keyboard? I played for you one time. Remember I played for you guys? Yeah. Not the keyboard, though. Oh, Not no. the keyboard. No. You no. don't want to hear that. No. Wow. Can't you play the hockey music? On the organ? <laughs> on the classic organ? Oh, yes. Now, Does what anyone is that do that beside? Anymore? I don't That's, think they do. That thing beside it, I'm going to guess that that holds the prees. Yes. <laughs> That little Lock thing. box. Lock box of priests. <laughs> I like it. I like your cut of your jib. Butco. Oh my gosh. This is well, it. Hey, this is what we've it's come down to now. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what it's well, come down to. This threesome. Uh, uh, this is uh this is bad. This no, is really isn't. this is really gone gone poorly. What I f- what I feel though is that I think that uh our producers did not help us out at all with getting <laughs> any guests on. Dave Cadeau has not helped us one bit to try to get our guests on. You know, he keeps asking us to find guests. It doesn't he realize that that's not going to happen? No. I no. think, I, I, I'm not sure he, he knows that. I think he should by now. Yeah. But, you know what, we could take it upon ourselves. And really, if we really want to go get a few guys, we can just call them and say, you're coming on. It's simple as that. But you know you what? Know that would make work for us. That would make work. <laughs> we don't want work. Every time I think about bringing somebody on, I'm like, oh, man, we can't tell those stories. Hey, you want to bring on Wes Lysak? No problem. This yeah. whole thing is going to be bleeped out. Yeah. He's going, to be, he's going to be in big trouble, and you and I are going to be in trouble, but guilty by association. Yeah. That's just what's going to happen. Yeah, he you can't know, When on. it's just you and I talking about other people, we can get away with it. They're not here. They probably don't hear us. You know, maybe somebody talks about it. We get away when they're when we're, they're here. Oh boy! Then they can start telling stories about us, buddy. We open the door. You don't want yeah, to but, open the door. But this is taped, so we could just shut everything off. Oh yeah, right. Shut it off. Bucko. Oh my god! What is hey, well, Bucko, listen, we, Bucko we, has all the cutouts somewhere at home. Eh? He has all the audio files just cut out. He's saving for blackmail purposes. Oh yeah. One day Me I'm too. gonna extort all of you. I don't know if you're uh, not that you'd ever want to come around, but. I've got a couple things. My son is in uh, minor midget, so it's U16, right? 16-year-olds playing hockey. Uh, Wednesday, the 10th of March, we played our last game, and we're waiting to go to the, to the playoffs, right, to the OMHAs. And nice. uh, so there's 12 teams. Two teams on each side go to the OMHAs, right, This which would be this weekend. So 
we were Milton was ten and one. We're nine two and one, and Halton Hills is eight two and one right now. Right, so they were supposed to play the Wednesday the tenth. Like we were supposed to know if we were going to the OMH. We had to wait yeah. eleven days. They're playing tonight because someone had COVID. So they're playing tonight. If Halton Hills beats Milton, we're tied. We All have three to way, no? No. Or are tied with the other one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're tied with Halton Hills. So the, instead of, because we beat them in the playoffs, which is, you should naturally, we we tied them and beat them in the playoffs, which means we move ahead. It doesn't matter if it's a yeah. tie. Oh, no. They decided, the league decided that it's going to be a one head-to-head matchup on Wednesday against each Come other. On. So if Halton Hills wins, we got to go to a head-to-head game to go to the OMHAs in Kingston. So, anyways, it's going to really? be a good. We're playing them. Well, we would play them at home if if they win tonight against Milton. We play them on Wednesday night at eight thirty. I know it's late. Where's here. home? Where's home? What's the a four uh, pad? Arena? Four pad, right here, the Seymour Hannah, where the football field is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right okay. by my right by my mom's place up there. So, anyways, yeah, it's eight thirty. You know, I should come out. There's going to be a. Uh, it's good hockey. Double A. It's good hockey. It's fast. It's guys are hitting they have each like other. Like a little. Uh... There's a what bar, they like a little little bar. They got like where you can buy like sour keys and like popcorn and slushies. What do you mm-hmm. what do you eat at rinks nowadays? Uh, beer wings. <laughs> <laughs> they got a restaurant. Sounds bar. even better. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, if you're not well, around, if you're around, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. All right. Well, let's 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 talk about it, and we'll talk about the get next guests. They're going to come on our show. Yeah. The no guests. No guests. Yeah. No guests at all. I guess we're getting to crunch time, Bucko. I'm, I'm thinking we've got a couple more of these before the season tips off or tips or kicks or whatever the hell you want to call it. And then we're right into our action, eh? Yep. But uh, listen, I, I it's great to see you again, Bucko. I mean, this has been just, a, just an absolute pleasure. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I can spend part of my work day uh, with you and your sweater. That's right. Yeah, that's your a sweater. beautiful sweater. Chevy Chase. It's, nice. it's ribbed. It's <laughs> ribbed for your pleasure. I have a meeting, guys, in 20 minutes. And so what, what do actually, you have to do before that? I'm working. I write my exam, Mitzi. Oh, when? Not before mid-May, but uh, it's it's going to be good this time. I'm going to get it. Is this the know. one where you, you got a little help on the side? No, no help. I wish I had help. I'm going to get a tutor, though. I'm going to definitely get yeah. a tutor for this one. Yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be good. I need to get this for... You just got to pass the test. Who cares? After that, you never have to worry about it again. You just got to find a way to pass the test. Yeah, I will. I can't. Yeah, I will. 100%. That's me. 100%. 100%. Hitch. 100%. 100%. Hitch. Hitch. Well, hey, we got to we we got to sign off, bud. I got to go. Rob's got stuff to do. He's got the test to study for. He's got work to do. Butco. Uh, oh, you got painting. Nice. No, Butco. It was a pleasure. Uh, that's it for the Morielli and Hitch podcast. We'll come to you again soon. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Hey, guys.